if I look at my map and I have a water break hitting or a temperature break hitting a current break hitting over top of structure and I got a good chlorophyll build on it and it's in a 10 square mile area I'm gonna find the lowest place on the sea surface for the altimetry I'm gonna find the lowest spot that I can and that's gonna be my starting point that's where I want to go first the reason is because there's more there's more upwelling underneath that creating that sea surface temperature I mean that sea surface height to be lowered it's creating a vacuum on the sea surface so using our machines I don't have any subscriptions service on my garments on my garments I'm using I'm watching water temperature and I'm I'm keeping in you know I'm keeping all this information side by side with me I'm I'm I know what water temperature I'm supposed to be going through to get to the water temperature that I'm supposed to be at so I'm always watching that I'm always watching my machine for bait and different structure in the water as we talked before structure is anything in the water it could be a bait ball it could be a floating pallet it could be anything so I take all that information the night before that I go fishing and I use it, my machines to my advantage. Uh, we can talk about wind direction. Wind direction here, the, the, old, the old saying is, is that if it, the wind's out of the east, the fishing is the least. If the wind's out of the west, fishing is the best. I found personally we kind of catch better, we get better days on the southwest wind. Um, a northeast wind here can get really sketchy because the northeast wind is blowing against a southern or a northerly current so if you have a current going north and you have a wind coming out of the north you can imagine that that just it creates waves it's, it's, it's intolerable it's not fun nobody enjoys it uh, east wind is just about textbook we usually the bite's not as good on an east wind not to say you won't get bit but uh, typically we get better on a west wind or southwest wind especially um, the moon has a lot to do with it the lunar effect you know the wahoo we typically seem to catch fish either three or four days before the moon or three or four days after the moon so and we'll probably get in that a little bit deeper but the the lunar effect i mean the the, the soul lunar or whatever the barometric pressure i like to catch fish i mean i don't like to catch i like to catch fish all the time but typically we catch fish our best bite is in about 30 you know 29 30 that's when we typically see that better bite and there's really nothing special as far as you don't have to go extravagant on your on your your machines like let's go back to the depth finder to the garments I run a BM 175 transducer but you don't have to I run that because I swordfish as well as long as you can read like we said, I'm typically not fishing over 400 feet deep. So as long as you can read up to 400, 500 feet deep, and with these new machines nowadays, I mean that's like your off the Walmart shelf, you know, hummingbird. You can buy hundred dollar hummingbirds to get on your boat, and you can read 400 feet deep. The 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 electronics nowadays is like it's it's insane to what our dads and and grandfathers were using back when they had the flash thing, you know, back they used to stick the thing down in the water beside the John boat. So. Use your electronics. Uh, always check your weather. Lay your temperature over your current, over a piece of structure, and try to find the lowest spot of altimetry in that area. And don't forget your chlorophyll. You want two or three days on your chlorophyll. And like I said, if you go to part two of this video, or if you, you know, watch part two of this video, that will be in greater detail, and you'll actually be able to see us utilizing all that information in one. And don't let it be overwhelming. This sounds a whole lot more than what it you know it really is. You do this a couple times and you start figuring out, it'll just start ringing in your head. I do want to tell you one thing though, is I log every fishing trip that I make. When you write stuff down, even if you never look at it again, if I know today I looked at my sat fish and I had a 78 degree water against a 76 degree water, it was in 100, 190 feet. It was on, a, I had a two and a half day chlorophyll build on it and it was in uh, point 0.9 altimetry next to a uh, 1.4. I'll write that down in the book. I might not ever look at that again, but just by writing it down, now you've burned it in your brain that that second time you've actually seen it. So and and you'll start to pick up on that. You'll start to figure out. He'd be like, "Dag on! Remember last August, guys, when we had that west wind, and you know we had that big eddy come from down south, and we caught those wahoo. Well, hey, you know next week we're it's going to be the same conditions." 
so do it so it's all about information and, and that's you know your electronics provide you with that sea surface temperatures your water temperatures your depth you can you can read the bottom with your your bottom machine and it, there's really there's I mean limit it's limitless there's nothing there's so much information you can gather from all these all these machines and all these services and why wouldn't you use it you spend let's just say you buy a chart from Hilton's and it's 30 bucks and you you find all this stuff on the chart and you and you and he actually give you like a fish here fish there like he gives you like one or two or three different spots to fish well I've done that for years I've paid Ross and I've done all that and I've learned reading those synopsises that they send you on that you're basically going to school for free it teaches you if you read that to where they're telling you you'll learn how to read these maps and you'd be like oh well that makes sense he had a three-day chlorophyll build up in this eddy of water that was in a thousand feet and now that eddy of water now it's in 250 feet of water there's got to be fish in there i mean you, that's that's your information right there you teach yourself how to read these charts and the more you do it the more it's just going to be like second nature you know it's like riding a bike you, you you take the training wheels off one time and your dad pushes you down the road and you, and you fall off you get on it and you do it again and you sooner or later you know you, you're riding a bike every day with your buddies you're riding over to buddy's house it's the same exact thing so log all your information that you can uh, even if it's on your phone there's no, really no excuse we all have smartphones it takes five seconds you can voice text a note on your smartphone quicker than you can find your house key to get in your house you know what i mean so there's no excuse uh, use these service providers use them all I, like i said i use satfish satfish doesn't give you a fish here spot hilton's does roth's does they give you these fish here spots like this is the number one spot this is the number two spot I pay for all those services for a year and they are great. They are awesome. I mean, you know, I highly respect them. With the service that I use, I take all that information, which is the same thing they have, but I actually make my own synopsis. So really at the end of the day, it's my fault if I don't catch fish. So log all your information, use your electronics to your advantage, use your radar. If you have it, you know, use your depth finder, use the, the fishing reports, which is a whole nother thing watch your fishing reports i mean there's tackle shops provide them there's instagram facebook twitter all this stuff all this information is there you just have to use it so that's that's my advice on that 